What up, it's your boy Sly Kane and Afro Near TV coming today with another review. But first, before I get into that, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and please click that subscribe button. It costs nothing and it definitely helps me out a lot. A lot. And I definitely want to let you know that we do have finally a website, and you can visit it at www.afronerdtv.com. And you will be getting a review on YouTube, but it'll also be for my bibliophiles a written review from my homie B had not so you will be seeing that on there but all right let's get into the review Star Wars the last Jedi baby who been waiting for this I've been waiting for this because we finally got more of Luke Skywalker but my rating is going to be an 8.5 out of 10 and I love the movie but I had a couple gripes with it it wasn't anything major the the gripe is probably the same one I had with the first um with the first um awakens um, but from the beginning of the movie, I loved it. I loved the the, the beginning Tie Fighter and X Wing uh, fight. Um, them trying to bomb this this huge ship from the um, what are they? Uh, the, the, the let's just say the dark side. I can't think of the, the the Republic. Yeah, the Republic. So that that whole scene was great because it was a teachable moment for the character Poe. Um, because he kind of went half cocked in. Was um like oh we can destroy their big ship we'll never get another chance like this and and they eventually did yeah but they lost so many people in that run they lost like three bomber ships two that blow blew up before even getting to that ship and then one where the person had to sacrifice themselves just to get the bombs to drop and destroy that ship and Leia lets them know like yeah we won that but we lost so many people casualties we didn't have to lose. Which I thought was pretty dope that she, that that was a teachable moment and let them know that we sometimes have to count our blessings and and it's okay to run sometimes so we can save people. Um, seeing Finn wake up and his little side story with this um this Asian character named Rose, which I I, I really loved her. I loved her character. I love the character Rose. Their little side mission with them trying to go and find this this code breaker to to break onto the the bad guy ship because they were being tracked through light speed so i thought that was dope um the little showing them like how she used to be a slave and why people's greed and selling weapons and stuff hurts other people like the little people and finn needed to learn that because he's like oh this is great why wouldn't you like this place and she kind of schooled him and she let him know like everything that glitters ain't gold bro so i like that and then we get to ray and luke i've been waiting for this and Luke's like Yoda. He's literally Yoda. He doesn't want to be bothered. He feels like he failed um, Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, e Emo Vader, whatever you want to call him. You choose. I call him Emo Vader. Um, he feels like he failed. So he, he, you know, he exiled himself. And it's literally a mirror of Master Yoda. He felt like he failed. Obi-Wan Kenobi did the same thing. It's like a trend for Jedi. If they fail, it's like, I don't, I don't need to be seen. Shame, 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 whatever. Uh, I like that how she was um, trying to get him to train, and it showed his daily lives. It was it was great. It was funny, um, and he finally says he's gonna train her, and then he lets she he sees how powerful she is, and that the dark side is taking over. And they kind of show a little bit more of the dark side, which was kind of dope. Um, the little aspect of um, them showing more of what the dark side is and how it preys on the the desires of um, young Jedis to get them to come over to the dark side. So I thought that was dope. But like I said, my gripes with that movie is literally Kylo Ren and Snoke. They build up Snoke so much in the first movie, making you think he was going to be such a big protagonist in this movie, but he really wasn't. It's was kind of like a, he kind of fizzed out. It's like, okay, Kylo Ren is still, like I said, he's emo Vader. He's the same he was in the first movie. He didn't really kind of grow out of that. They tried to give him a little more depth, saying that he, he was conflicted because he killed his father, which, yeah, I can see that. But they didn't, in the end, it didn't seem like he was really that conflicted. I guess he's, if you look at it, I feel like they just need to make him a full villain. And by the end of this movie, I guess that's what they did. Because he killed Snoke, and he tries to make it seem like he did it for Rey to save her. Because she, she goes to try to save him and bring him to the light side like Luke did with Darth Vader in the end. And yet the same outcome came where Darth Vader killed Darth Sidious and Kylo Ren killed Snoke. But it didn't kind of pan out the way it did in The Return of the Jedi. And that scene, The Return of the Jedi, when Vader kills um, Sidious, it had more impact, especially on me. Because you can literally see through the mask how Vader was like, oh my god, he's killing my son. I can't let this happen. 
kill him. In in this movie, it's just Kylo going like this, like, hey, psych, fool, you thought I was going to kill her, I killed you. Ha. So there's that. And I, I feel like we need a better villain. Kylo Ren isn't that villain for me. And I feel like that's what the series is lacking. Other than that, everything was great. The backstories, the the, the special effects, and my favorite part, Yoda returning. Yoda returning one last time to give his student a little bit more of enlightenment. Because Luke needed it. And he let him know that, hey, yes, you failed. But that's a part of being a master. I passed on my teachings to you. That includes my failures. So that you can learn from them. And you failed with Ben Solo. You shouldn't. Do, don't fail with Ray. You learn your lesson from your failures and pass that information down to Ray. Because Yoda comes back and he's just force lightning and shit and destroying all of the old Jedi stuff, which Luke said he was going to do, but he really wasn't going to. He really wasn't going to do it. And Yoda's like, "Ah, oh, you lack the resolve, so let me just destroy it for you, so it's out of your mind." And I, I dug that. It was a great callback. It, it was, it was amazing that part. And I love the fact that they show Leia how strong she is with the Force because. The Skywalkers are strong with the Force. It's always been that way. And I know a lot of people are upset that she got blew into space. And she was protected by the Force. And she kind of forced herself, force pulled herself back into the ship and survived. We knew she's strong with the Force. That's nothing new. They've all been strong. It's why Kylo Ren has lasted this long without really proper training. You know what I'm saying? He He's strong with the Force because of his uncle, his mom, his granddad. And, and that's just what it is. And that's how I feel about it. But like I said... I give the movie an 8 out, eight, 8.5 out of 10. It could be better, but I loved it, and I do suggest you go see it. But like I said, you have a review on the, on the YouTube, which I'm doing now, and you'll also see one written out by my homie, Be Had Not, which will be on the AfroNerdTV.com website. Definitely go check it out. And like I said, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, letting me know how you felt about the movie, and please hit that subscribe button. This has been Sly Cannon, AfroNerdTV. TV.